how am I talking to you right now? Yeah, yeah, there's something complicated going on with the internet and electricity and the YouTubes and choosing to click the link and stuff. But I mean, what am I actually doing when I talk to you? How do we speak? Well, to find out, I'm going to explain what your voice box is, how we use it to make words, and which animals talk like humans. So, the voice box, also known as the larynx, is a hollow, tubular little thing that sits at the top of your windpipe. It hangs from your hyoid bone, which anchors your tongue. Fun fact for your next pub quiz, that is the only bone in the body that doesn't articulate directly with any other bone. Now your voice box is made of cartilage and holds two little bands of tissue that stretch across the throat, the vocal cords or vocal folds. We've got a set of muscles at the back of our throat that actually stretch and shape these cords. They're pulled together when you speak and the air rushing past them, pushed up by a diaphragm, makes them vibrate and produce sound. Just try speaking whilst touching your throat and you can feel those vibrations. That's also how robotic sounding electrolarynxes work. They're used by people who've suffered from throat cancer and are simply a vibrating head that replaces the voice box. The vibrations themselves are actually caused by a principle in physics called the Bernoulli effect. Bernoulli's idea was that faster moving fluids are at a lower pressure than any surrounding slower moving fluids. So, when the air rushes through your vocal cords, the pressure drops between them and the higher pressure air snaps them together. Repeat this hundreds or even thousands of times a second and you have a voice. During puberty, the voice box grows and tilts to a different angle in the neck. That's why some men have a bigger Adam's apple sticking out of their throat than others. And that characteristic voice breaking, the plague of many a young lad, comes because the cords lengthen. And it actually happens for both genders, actually. Although during male puberty, our cords can get 60% longer, meaning a dramatic deepening, possibly even up to a whole octave. So, we've got the equipment, but how do we use it to make complicated sounds like, well, the phrase complicated sounds? As I've mentioned, when you speak, shout or sing, you masterfully control the flow of air through the vocal cords. But speech involves much more than just your voice box. The sound your vocal cords make is shaped by changes in your throat and oral cavity as well. So it's all about your tongue, lips and the resonating cavities inside your skull. Now, I promised to talk to you about animals that speak like humans. Well, because the way we speak uses this specialised equipment, despite many attempts, we've never managed to just train an animal like a chimpanzee to speak. Some animals can make sounds that sound like humans. Parrots, of course, but also whales, elephants, some orangutans and, famously, goats. Other than the funny goats though, which weren't really trying to sound like us, those other animals seem to be vocal learners like humans. And unlike, say, a cow, they can hear a new sound and imitate it. One elephant called Koshik even managed to speak Korean by sticking his trunk in his mouth to change its shape. How we can hear a new sound and copy it may lie in our brains. Us, and parrots, actually have similar direct connections between a specific area of our forebrain and our vocal centres. So both parrots and us seem to learn to mimic in the same way. So unfortunately, when someone calls you bird-brained, they're kind of onto something. Sorry, guys. Lasers. They make everything better, right? From Bond films, to nightclubs, to your actual eyes. But wait, how does that laser eye surgery actually work? Aren't we told we're supposed to avoid looking directly at bright lights? 